Hello, you absolute legends. The Spelunky speedrunning community is in complete shock. A huge discovery has just been made, and it's one that had been seemingly hidden in plain sight for almost 10 years. Now, more often than not when big discoveries are made, it's by established experts of a game that have been theory crafting and investigating for hundreds or thousands of hours. Specifically, looking for ways to break the game in advantageous ways. But sometimes, big discoveries can come out of nowhere, by people who aren't even in the general community at all. These are the ones that, in my opinion, are the most fascinating. You can have hundreds of speedrunners playing for thousands upon thousands of hours, studying the game in every tiny detail, examining the code under a microscope, literally banging their heads against walls in every conceivable way to try and get an unexpected outcome, and then, out of the blue, a random person can enter a community with a brand new technique that no one saw coming. And in the case of Spelunky, that's exactly what happened. On the 26th of September, a user by the name of Riverrun entered the speedrunning Discord and posted the message, I found this glitch and was wondering if y'all were aware of it or could share any insights. Under the message was a small video, and that video has since drastically changed the way much of the game is played. In this video, we are going to take a look at this huge discovery that has everyone so excited. We will learn a bit about Spelunky for those who haven't played the game, and we will also learn how this new technique will change the way the game is played, and what it means for the future of Spelunky speedrunning. I really hope you enjoy. Now, legends, in this video, we are talking about a huge skip that just happened in Spelunky. But you know what you should never skip? taking good care of your face, which is why you need to be using face care products from this video's sponsor, Geology. Geology is a nine-time award-winning men's skincare company with over 5,000 five-star reviews. All you have to do is take a quick 30-second quiz outlining your goals, and Geology will provide you with an easy-to-follow regimen that is shipped directly to your door. Personally, I am terrible with my sleep, so I end up getting these dark patches under my eyes. So Geology sent me their award-winning eye cream, plus their daily face wash and daily cream. I know these products work because as soon as I start getting lazy and stop using them, my wife immediately notices and starts telling me to wash my face again. Look, if you're not taking good care of your face, you need to start today. And if you go to geology.com or use the link in the description and take their free skincare quiz, you will save up to 70% off on a 30-day trial. I will also add a link to their Discord, where you can join the new Geology Galaxy community for daily tips, giveaways, and more. Just click the link in the description and start giving your face the love it deserves. Speedrunning Spelunky is very different to your typical game. For almost every game that one can speedrun, players will know exactly what they want to do ahead of time. They will meticulously practice every movement, every trick, every technique, and try to execute them all in a row without making a mistake. They can do this because most games are the same every time you play. But Spelunky doesn't work that way. It's a roguelike platformer, which means that levels are randomly generated. Levels are the same when it comes to their size, but when it comes to the specific layout, every time you play the game, things will be slightly different. Therefore, there is no use practicing a specific order of movements. Instead, players need to focus on quick thinking and the ability to apply movements to brand new environments on the fly. The most important skill ends up being the ability to improvise as efficiently as possible. This randomness also leads to something that you almost never see in a speedrun, which is the practice of pivoting. In every other speedrun I've personally seen, a player will know exactly what category they are going to be attempting. This could be any percent, which is to beat the game by any means in the shortest time, or 100%, which is to get every item. Or it could be trying to go for a specific ending. But the point is that you know what you're attempting before you even start. In Spelunky, players will change the type of speedrun they are performing depending on what kind of items they encounter during their run. So for example, generally players start every speedrun doing what's called low percent, which is where you don't collect any items and beat the game. 
But then on level two, players reach the first shop and they get to see what items are available. And if they get a good item, they can pick it up and pivot to an any percent run. Then later on, they might find an item that allows them to get a different ending, at which point they may decide to pivot again. Therefore, the best players are proficient in every single category and are able to adapt to take advantage of whatever the game offers. The goal of Spelunky is to get through four main zones, the mines, the jungle, the ice caves, and the temple, each zone consisting of four levels. And at the end of the fourth zone, the temple, you will find the game's main boss, Olmec. Olmec can't be killed by conventional means, so the idea is to get him to pound his way through the ground until he eventually falls into the lava below. Once defeated, the final door is opened, allowing the player to finish the game. However, in this final boss room, there is a hidden door. Just above the lava, in a position that seems impossible to reach, is a door that leads to a fifth zone, the Zone of Hell. The only way to reach the door is to jump on Olmec as he falls into lava and use him as a platform. At the end of Hell is a secret boss called King Yama. Therefore, there are two possible endings, defeating Olmec or defeating King Yama. The world record for beating Olmec, otherwise known as the Any% percent Run, is 1 minute and 35 seconds achieved by Hectic just this month. The world record for entering Hell and beating King Yama, known as Hell% percent, is 3 minutes and 19 seconds by Kinijup, achieved in early August of this year. Aside from being in a hard to reach location, the door to Hell is also locked unless you have the Book of the Dead. The Book of the Dead is located inside the City of Gold, but the only way to enter this temple is to get through a golden door which is also locked. This golden door requires the scepter and the headjet, but the only way to acquire the headjet is to pick up the Ankh and use it on a particular level. So what we end up with is a series of items that are required for the player to collect in order to reach Hell, and this series of items is called the Chain. Each item requires the one before it, and so on. But at the end of September 2022, everything changed, when a way to enter Hell was discovered that didn't need you to collect any items at all. On the 26th of September, a user by the name of Riverrun entered the Spelunky Discord and posted this message, followed by a video. Riverrun was not a part of the community, and this was literally their very first post. The video showed them getting into the Hell Door without having the Book of the Dead. You can tell that they don't have the book for two reasons. The first is that there is no Book of the Dead icon at the top of the screen, which will appear when you have the book. And also, the door to Hell is initially closed, which wouldn't be the case if you held the book, as when you do have the book, the door to Hell is automatically open when you enter the level. The Spelunky community was in complete shock. Riverrun had discovered a way to enter Hell without the Book of the Dead, which meant that you didn't need to collect all of the other items in the chain. But how exactly did they do it? Well, as I mentioned previously, Olmec can't be destroyed, so the idea is to get him to destroy the floor until he falls into lava. Positioning yourself underneath him while he's in the air will cause him to perform a stomp and destroy one layer of blocks directly underneath him. In theory, it might be possible for Olmec to destroy the block concealing the hell door, but it's situated in the air, with no solid blocks or platforms near it. And the only way for Olmec to destroy blocks is if he lands on a solid object. However, scattered throughout the floor are these pushable blocks that can be moved and manipulated. So what Riverrun did is stack a bunch of these blocks on top of each other and pushed them into the lava. They don't sink immediately, which means that they can now create a solid object for Olmec to stomp on. And when he stomps on an object in front of the Hell Door, he destroys the block preventing access, allowing the player through. The technical reason this happens is a bit more complex. Throughout Spelunky, there are several doors that are hidden or blocked behind a tile. This tile could be in the form of a rock to hide its location, or it could be a tile that simply blocks access without the required items. For example, the door to the City of Gold, which holds the Book of the Dead, is blocked by a large gold slab, which can only be removed with the headjet and scepter. But here's the interesting thing about tiles. The game cannot store multiple layers of information. 
So when a tile conceals a doorway, there isn't actually a doorway behind it. What's actually happening is that the tile that's concealing the doorway contains a flag that tells the game to replace that tile with a door when it's destroyed. When Olmec stomps in front of the hell door, he completely destroys the tile that's blocking entry. Then the flag tells the game to respawn the door in its place, now open. It should also be noted that the tile that's concealing the door to hell can't be destroyed with bombs or any other conventional means. It just so happens that Olmec basically destroys everything when he stomps, including the hell door, which ends up being extremely convenient. In hindsight, it's kind of funny that this wasn't found sooner, but as is the case with many large discoveries, they often seem obvious after the fact. I can think of discoveries in GoldenEye that probably should have been found 20 years earlier, but for some reason, certain techniques just have a way of flying under the radar. Now, it's all well and good that Riverrun found a way to open the Hell Door without the Book of the Dead, but the method they used was, for lack of a better term, slow. The time it takes to stack a bunch of pushable blocks on top of each other is very significant. Doing it like this would probably take several minutes, which is way too long to be of use in speedruns. If this skip were to be implemented, it would need to be done much quicker. To give you an idea about how fast the skip would need to be, we can compare the time it takes to get to Olmec with and without the chain items. The current world record for beating Hell, which did get the Book of the Dead, enters Olmec's lair at 2 minutes and 10 seconds. The Any% percent world record, which is basically what new Hell runs will look like because they no longer need to get the extra items, enters Olmec's lair at around 1 minute and 15 seconds. So without needing to get the chain items, you can reach Olmec's lair around 55 seconds quicker. So now, players will have a 55 second head start heading into Olmec. In the current Hell% percent world record, Kinijup beats Olmec and enters Hell in 26 seconds. And the fastest listed run on the rankings for beating Olmec and entering the Hell Door is 23 seconds. So for the new skip to be viable in world record runs, players would need to enter the Hell Door in around 1 minute and 20 seconds. Otherwise, the skip would just be way too slow and not worth doing. Using the method River Run discovered is far too slow, but it didn't take long for a much faster method to be created. There is a caveat though, it's extremely difficult. The reason River Run used multiple blocks is so that the blocks didn't immediately fall into the lava. This gave enough time for Olmec to stomp on them before they disappeared. But in theory, you can achieve the same effect by using one block. You would just have to time it perfectly and push the block so that it fell at the exact same time that Olmec performed a stomp. If timed correctly, he would stomp the block in midair while it was falling directly in front of the door. The amount of leeway you would have is 4 frames, which at 60 frames per second is 0.07 seconds. This is a tiny window, but in reality, it's even harder than it seems because you can't just wait in position and push the block when the time is right. This is because in order to initiate the stomp, you have to first position yourself underneath Olmec in order to get him to stomp down and destroy the block. This leaves you only a brief amount of time to get into position to push the block. And on top of that, if the block isn't placed perfectly, it also messes with the timing window. It all happens extremely quickly and there is hardly any time to prepare. It's just something that you basically have to end up doing by feel. Shockingly, despite its difficulty, some of the top players have already gotten it consistently enough to use in runs. On the 15th of October, the runner Hectic achieved a Hell% percent run with the skip in 3 minutes and 33 seconds, which is around 14 seconds behind the current world record. He finished Olmec's lair with the skip in 1 minute and 15 seconds, which is already fast enough to make the skip worthwhile. Now, this run didn't beat the world record because it was slow in other areas, but it's already impressive that the skip was used so quickly. In yet another run, he managed to do the skip in 57 seconds, even without using some of the items that could make it a bit faster. In practice attempts, players have beaten Olmec with the skip even faster. Repeating the Olmec fight over and over, Hectic managed to beat it in 43 seconds, which, if performed in a run, would mean that the overall strategy would save around 30 seconds. But what's more interesting is how the new skip affects other parts of the run, and allows them to save even more time. 
One of the most useful items players can get is the teleporter. It allows you to not only travel faster, but you can teleport down and up through platforms, which means that you don't have to go the long way around. The teleporter can be collected as early as the second level, which is not long into the run at all. The teleporter is always useful, and ideally, it would be great if you could use it through the entire run. However, because attaining the Book of the Dead requires you to collect the scepter, you ultimately have to drop the teleporter. This is because the player can only hold one item in your hands at a time, and it just so happens that out of all of the chain items, the scepter is the only one that requires you to hold it in this way. Therefore, you have to drop the teleporter in 4-1 to grab the scepter. Then, you have to play all of Zone 4 and 5 without this incredibly useful item, as there is no reasonable place to get it again after this point. But now, things have changed. You no longer need to get the scepter as you skip all of the chain items. This allows you to hold onto the teleporter until the very end, which ends up saving a pretty substantial amount of time. If played well, speedrunners can save around 10 to 15 seconds at the end of the run just from being able to teleport. Fully optimizing this time save will take a bit of time though, as it's a brand new strategy and players have never used the teleporter in hell before, so it's going to require a lot of practice to master it. Though early runs have already seen players get through hell much faster than they ever have before. In some of the more restrictive categories, Spelunky has already seen new world records from this new skip. But when it comes to the main category of simply beating hell as quickly as you can, we haven't seen one just yet. But it's definitely inevitable and will likely happen soon. Because of the roguelike element of the game, players simply have to wait until they get the opportunities to put this strategy into action. It's not as simple as just grinding for the hell percent world record, speedrunners will need to practice the skip and the new strategy that comes along with it, and then just hope they can clutch it when the moment arises. If you're already a Spelunky fan, or this looks interesting to you, I definitely recommend you give it a go. I will put a link to the Spelunky Discord in the description, as well as their rankings. A big thanks to the crew in the Spelunky Discord who helped me learn about the game. It was definitely a pleasure. And thanks to Hectic and Carly Braun for grabbing some gameplay footage for me to use. Thank you so much for watching, you legends. I hope you are having a fantastic day, and I will see you in the next video.